We're taking a live look at London, England. Various tributes are going on this week in honor of Queen Elizabeth II. She broke the record today for the longest British rule, 63 years and seven months. It overtakes the record set by her great, great grandmother. Hi again and good morning everyone. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. I'm Lisa Badeau here with Kyle Bosch. Now 11 minutes before the top of the hour and we're starting our non-stop news and weather to the 7 o'clock hour to help you plan your day. Well we hear all the time about not leaving cooking unattended but you have to admit many of us probably still do it. Yeah well last night that mistake led to some serious damage at a South Moorhead apartment. The fire happened around 8 last night. Firefighters say people living in a unit in the 1000 block of 20th Street South went grocery shopping while warming cooking oil on a stove. The oil overheated and ignited, causing about $45,000 in damage to the kitchen and dining room. Firefighters remind people never to leave food unattended on a stove and to make sure burners are cool to the touch before leaving the house. Grand Forks police are looking for the owner of a backpack that caused quite a scare Tuesday night. They were called to the 3800 block of Garden View Drive to investigate a backpack lying on the ground of the parking lot with the words, danger, stay back. The area had to be blocked off while members of the Grand Forks Regional Bomb Squad checked out the backpack. They didn't find anything dangerous or suspicious, but it's not known if the backpack was left as a hoax or if it was simply lost. If you have any information about what happened, you're asked to call Grand Forks Police at 787-8000. A Minnesota police officer is in serious condition after falling through a ceiling while making an arrest. It happened last night in Rogers, Minnesota. Police tracked an assault suspect to the attic of a home. The officer broke through the ceiling during a struggle with the man. Investigators say the officer fell about 10 feet to the floor and suffered a serious head injury. The suspect is in custody. Coming up on 651, time to get a look at weather and traffic on the ones. And we start with meteorologist Lisa Green. Good morning. A great start to our day. We had the northern lights again last night and even early this morning before sunrise. And now a beautiful sunrise in progress. Temperatures in the Fargo area are planner for this morning. Right around 50 degrees at 8 a.m. with uh, some partly cloudy skies. We do have a cloud deck that's starting to roll in. Sunrise just in a few minutes, just before 7 o'clock at 6.58. Mostly sunny by this lunch hour today. 68 degrees with mostly sunny conditions. And then some more clouds perhaps rolling in as a cold front starts its sweep through the valley. 75 degrees will be our high with mostly cloudy conditions later on this afternoon. Gorgeous sunrise right now. 51 degrees is our current temperature. We've got clear skies at the airport. Wind out of the southwest at 3 miles per hour. Up to the north, 48 degrees in Grand Forks. And this is where the cool air has already hit. 37 is our current temperature in Langdon. You may even need not just a layer, but a coat as you step out the door today in the Northern Valley. 46 degrees in Devil's Lake, 43 in Roseau and over in Thief River Falls. In contrast, down in Sisseton, 64 degrees right now, a lot milder to start off your day there. Some clouds again rolling into parts of southeastern, uh, our southeastern viewing area and now into parts of northwest Minnesota, but there are some places still enjoying that sunrise. Here's a look at our planner for the next several days. Today, a high of 75 degrees in Fargo, a cool day up to the north though where we have that cold air moving in we'll see highs only in the 60s there so a contrast from north to south for Thursday all of us in the 60s for highs maybe even some upper 50s in the far northern valley with that cool air spilling in behind that front a partly cloudy skies with a slight chance for a few rain showers late tonight and into the day Thursday Friday still cool we'll see more sunshine 69 degrees your high and looking ahead to the weekend Saturday's a big day for football fans 74 degrees will be your high temperature a cool start to the day at 47, and Sunday even warmer and pleasant conditions, a high of 78 degrees with a few more clouds rolling in. So two days in a row on a weekend where we actually get to enjoy some nice dry, quiet conditions. Now it's time for Traffic on the Ones. Let's check in with the Valley Today's Al Amit. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. The first thing you need to know about is the uh, road crews are back working again on eastbound Interstate 94, and uh, you start losing a lane, or losing lanes, that is to say, on the Red River Bridge and eastward from there. Road crews are out there. They're working. And again, this road uh, this uh, road work uh, stretches from Highway 75 or 8th Street all the way over to 336. It's a six-mile stretch. Make sure you allow yourself extra time to get through there. We had some terrific traffic back up through there yesterday. Also, a couple of stalled cars to tell you about on the eastbound Interstate 94. One is right near the Vets Boulevard ramp, and the other one uh, is east of uh, 
South University Drive. Traffic out here on the interstate getting pretty darn busy. Drive extra carefully today. Alamut Valley today, traffic. 653, turning back to your news headlines. Police in Fargo, Moorhead are looking for a man who led them on a chase overnight and then got away. Police tell us that it happened in South Moorhead just before midnight. They say 25 year old Tyler Grant of Moorhead took off when they were trying to make a traffic stop. He pulled over, ran away, and officers were unable to catch up with him. It's a drug bust that shocked even the police. An 18 year old is in jail after police say they caught him with LSD, pot, cash, and loaded guns. Colton Schock was arrested Monday night for possessing thousands of dollars worth of marijuana and 117 stamps of LSD, which sell for about five bucks on the street. Officers say they also found four loaded guns. Now, because this bus contains such a large amount of an uncommon drug, police say they are looking into the possibility that other young adults may be selling it on the streets. Testimony is set to resume today in the federal appeal of a man who killed a UND student in 2006. Alfonso Rodriguez Jr. was sentenced to, to death for the brutal kidnapping, rape, and murder of Drew Shadeen. His defense attorneys claim jury misconduct skewed the conviction, and they're questioning a number of the jurors this week during this appeals hearing. A North Dakota man has been charged with murder and attempted murder after a shooting at a wedding reception in New Rockford. 51-year-old David Trotsky is charged with killing Donnie Perleberg of Pingree and trying to kill his former girlfriend, Mary Seeler. Perleberg died at the scene after being shot in the head and neck. Seeler is in the hospital in Bismarck. A court-appointed lawyer will represent a rural Purim, Minnesota man accused of shooting his neighbor. 63-year-old Gerald Skolte was arrested Friday after the shooting of Michael Marcel Jr. in an alleged dispute over rent for a mobile home that Marcel lived in. Police say Skolte first told them that he thought Marcel had a gun and he feared for his own life. But video taken from Skolte's mobile home shows Marcel did not have a gun and did nothing to provoke the shooting. A former Moorhead hockey standout has been arrested again, this time in Ottertail County. Jacob Dittmer is being held for charges related to drinking and driving. Back in June, Dittmer was arrested for allegedly having sex with a 14-year-old girl. He's due in court on those charges later this month. Fargo fire crews are still looking into what caused a fire in the 1300 block of 4th Avenue North. They say it appears to have started in a bathroom on the second floor and spread to the attic. Everyone inside the home got out before firefighters arrived. This year's first day enrollment at Moorhead Public Schools was the highest since the mid-1990s. School officials say 6,259 students showed up for the first day of classes yesterday in grades K through 12. Kindergarten has the biggest class with 576 kids. No matter the crop, this harvest season comes along with a number of ways farmers and others could get hurt if they're not paying attention. The Valley Today's Christy Larson has been live this morning at Butler Machinery in Fargo with some important harvest safety reminders. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, guys. One thing that I know is true for any job is you have to recognize when you're feeling too stressed out. For, so for John Norwatsky is going to tell us a little bit about how to recognize some of those signs that people are being a little too overwhelmed. Okay, first of all, I just want to say that, that this is a stressful time. Harvest is a stressful time for farmers, and they need to recognize it, and they need to recognize symptoms of stress. And, and I think a couple of them, one of them is, is just irritability. Uh, another is, is being tired, and, and I guess the third one is, is anger. And so when we see these symptoms in each other, we should point those out, you know, in, in a kind way and say, you know, maybe it's time to take a break. Maybe it's time to quit. And I think the longer you go into the day, the longer, you, you know, these, some of these days are, are 15 to 18 hours long and working day and night. So I think stress is important. Another thing to consider is to make sure you get enough rest and enough sleep. These are uh, things that times when we tend to, to, you know, avoid sleep or not take the necessary time to sleep. So I just want to encourage farmers to, to take time to sleep, to rest, and to make sure that they recognize symptoms of stress and, and, and agree with each other that this is a time to take a break when you see those symptoms. Yeah, and it's not even just you yourself. Maybe you're not recognizing those symptoms, but maybe you see someone you know having those symptoms. You need to tell them, hey, I suggest a break for you. You know, you, you deserve a rest. You deserve right. a rest exactly. this morning, John. <laughs>
You must too after being up at 4.30 every morning. <laughs> ah, Kyle, Lisa, you heard him. We deserve a well-rested break. But again, we talked so many different things about respiratory issues, not using your cell phone while you're driving, so many different things. And one more reminder, as you are out on the road and you see farmers out carrying a lot of that grain, carrying the sugar beets, carrying whatever it may be, you need to make sure you give them that space so that they can safely distribute it. I always feel like farmers are some of the only people that really understand how early we have to get up. Because they, they get up very, <laughs> very early. They're up and early. watching with us, yeah. <laughs> They're up at 4.30. Christy Larson reporting live. Thank you, Christy. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. 58% of mothers refuse to do this in the morning without their makeup on. The answer, not going to drop the kids off at school until they put the face on. If you want to take part in our question of the morning, all you have to do is head to our Valley News Live Facebook page where we invite you to join the conversation throughout the day. As they're headed, uh, the kiddos are headed to school this morning, um, you're going to have mom with the makeup on and probably uh, at least a light jacket. Exactly. It's a little cool, especially in the Northern Valley. There are some places that are in the 30s to start off this morning. So the bus stop weather, a little cool, but later today we'll get back into the 70s. Thanks for waking up with the Valley today. Remember, we'll have more local news and weather for you right here in just 25 minutes. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning.